So how do we make a helium nucleus? How many uh, protons are there in a helium nucleus? Four. Two. Oh, wait, sorry, two. Two protons. <laughs> sorry. And how many neutrons? Two. two. Two protons and two neutrons makes a helium nucleus. Um, in this reaction, where, where would we be? Uh, are we going up the graph or down the graph? Down, right? No. No. Down. Are we going anywhere? So where are we starting on the graph? We're starting with separate protons and neutrons, At the bottom. which are here. Mm -hmm. And where is helium? Well, it's just a little bit further to the right. Right, because it's just got a slightly bigger mass than those. So helium would be over here, say. So we're going from here to here. Is that favored or disfavored? Favored. So are we going to add or release energy? Release. So where should I put energy in this equation, on the right or on the left? On the left. What was the question? Right. Yeah. Oh, okay. We know that it's favored to produce helium. Basically, anything that moves you towards iron is good. Remember that iron is the happiest. Maybe it's better to use happy and unhappy. Iron is the happiest, so anything that uh, is moving us towards iron on this graph is going to be favored, and that means exothermic, releasing energy. So this is an exothermic reaction uh, that's going to release some energy. In fact, what's the name of this energy? This is the binding energy. Because um, it's easier to see that if you go backwards, we could call this the unbinding energy. How much energy do we have to put into helium to break it into separate protons and neutrons? Well, that's exactly this energy here, right? This would be the energy that we need to do the reverse reaction. We have to put this energy in to go in reverse and unbind the helium. So maybe, again, it would be better to call the binding energy the unbinding energy. But obviously, the energy that you have to put in to unbind the nucleus is the same as the energy that's released when you bind the nucleus. So binding energy is the energy that's released when you bind the nucleus or that you have to put in to unbind the nucleus. Binding energy. Okay, now we want to use the idea that mass and energy are equivalent to each other. This energy just can't come out of nowhere. The energy must have come out of somewhere well, what must have happened is we must have used some of this mass and turned it into energy. We must have used some of this mass and turned it into energy. Otherwise, we couldn't be explain where the energy came from. So which side has more mass, the left or the right? The left? Wait, has more mass, the right? Yeah, which of the, uh, does the do the, the protons and the neutrons together have more mass, or does this helium have more mass? Again, we know that some of the mass over here must have been turned into energy. So does that mean that when the reaction happened, we were gaining mass or losing mass? Losing mass. Yeah, losing mass because they're turning it into energy. So who has more mass, the left or the right-hand side? Oh, yeah, you, you don't seem too happy about that, but that's right. Yeah. Well, wait a second. What happened to that? What happened to that extra mass? Energy. Yeah, it turned into energy. The mass can't just disappear, but it can be transformed into energy. And the energy can't just appear, but it can be created out of mass. Um, so um, the reason there's less mass here is because some of the mass has been converted into energy. That's the binding energy. This should strike you as pretty weird because in ordinary life, mass never appears or disappears. We don't usually change mass into energy, but at the nuclear level, this is an important type of reaction. Okay, so here we can figure out um, this binding energy. Although actually, um, yeah. So what we know here is that there must be a difference between these two masses. There's a difference between these two masses. The name for the difference between those two masses is the mass defect. The mass defect is the mass that we lost in this reaction. The mass defect is the change in the mass. 
in the reaction. So how can we figure out the mass defect? Well, it shouldn't be that hard. We can just look up what the masses of, are of separate protons and neutrons. And we can look up what the mass is of a helium nucleus. And if we subtract that, we'll know what the change in the mass was. Now, your common sense would have told you that if you just add up the mass of two protons and the mass of two neutrons, common sense would seem to indicate that that should be exactly equal to the mass of a helium nucleus. But we just learned that common sense is wrong about this because when the protons and the neutrons come together, they magically lose some of their mass because it got converted into energy. So again, common sense would say that mass of two protons plus mass of two neutrons should equal the mass of helium. But actually in the table, you'll see that the, these will have a greater mass than this, and that would give you the mass defect. Okay. And then how would you find the binding energy? If you know the mass defect, how do you find the binding energy? Uh, we know what happened to this mass that we lost. This mass got changed into energy. Wouldn't you just, or, or just how can we figure out how much energy we can get from a certain amount of mass? Isn't it whatever you lost there, you got there, but then you have to convert it? Into energy. Yeah. How can we convert this mass into energy? What's the equation that tells us how much energy we can get from a certain amount of mass? Oh, E equals mc squared. Yeah, that's right. So you have not even heard of that equation before this class. That's right. OK, so um, this is that famous equation. This is telling us how much extra energy we got from losing this mass in the reaction. The mass and energy can be changed into each other. Rather than saying they're equivalent, maybe it would be more straightforward to say that they can be changed into each other. If you, um, so when you lose mass, it doesn't just disappear, it's changed into energy. And when you gain energy, it doesn't come out of nowhere, it comes out of the mass that you lost. And this tells you how much energy you can get from a certain amount of mass. I'm going to call this delta m c squared, because usually the mass defect is labeled delta m because it's the change in the mass. So now we can see how to find binding energy. How do you find binding energy? Figure out the mass defect and then use this equation find the binding energy. Well, unfortunately, there's a bunch of practical difficulties, so now we should start going through some examples.